G'day everyone and welcome to episode number six of the Ask Tom Tech Show. My name is Tom Freer and this week we're going to get straight into it. Um, I've got a question here on Facebook from Cornerstone Advice and their challenge is that they are got a number of staff in their office and currently they run off a, a local storage device in that office but they want to be able to have people working remotely accessing all that data and they need to come up with a solution for that. So this is a pretty common challenge, um, particularly in today's sort of world where we're expected to have access to data um, and want to be able to see that on our mobiles, on our, on our laptops, um, wherever we are. So this represents a bit of a change in the way that you need to manage that data in your business. The traditional local storage um, with a map drive or, or a network share just isn't really going to cut it, um, particularly when you've got people working from working remotely um, and needing access to that data all the time. So what we can do is a couple of ways you can handle this and strategies will, will differ depending on the size of your organization, the number of users you've got, um, the internet services that you've got. But essentially what you want to do is look to get that data up on the cloud. So for Cornerstone Advice in this, this instance, um, what I would suggest is that we look at a solution where you can move that data off the NAS altogether, put it up on a cloud environment somewhere, um, and get people accessing that data remotely, um, regardless of what internet connection on. What that will do is give your business a little bit more agility around not having to rely on a single internet link in your home or your, your office, wherever this NAS is. Um, it will mean that regardless of what's happening in your area, the data will be accessible um, via any internet connection. So your team working from home, working from their client sites, um, not relying on your internet service. So that would be my sort of first point of call. Now, as a bigger organization, you may have bigger internet links, you may have more servers and more data. Um, to manage that, then you can look at technologies like VPN style technologies where people connect into your network securely and then open those files. The last thing you want to be doing to your own network is really opening up and, and putting file servers on the internet because um, that's just going to open up a massive number of challenges around security and managing that. Um, whereas moving it to the cloud, um, we're moving them into an environment where that is all managed um, the access method is different. Um, it's a lot more secure um, than publishing a file server on the internet. So what does this all mean? So it's, it's quite a few technical components in amongst that. Um, so if I get back to sort of Cornerstone's question, the answer for them is, and I know I've spoken to them, um, and they already have Office 365. So within Office 365, there's a platform known as SharePoint, and there's also a component called OneDrive. Now these are both great cloud storage um, systems. So the key difference is that OneDrive is more about the synchronization of data. So you would save a file onto a computer like you normally would into your My Documents. That file will then get synchronized up to the cloud and then it's available on the cloud and it can also then be synchronized back to another machine. It can be shared with someone else and they can access that. Um, but it all relies on the sync technology. Now, that is all good for you personally when you've got your own data that you're working on between multiple devices. Where it starts to become more challenging is when you start sharing out multiple folders and want to have permission control and who can see what. Um, yes, you can share it out to other staff in your organization, not a problem, but managing that becomes a bit of a nightmare as you add more folders, as you add more users, you want people to have different permissions to different areas. It becomes a real challenge. So the OneDrive is great for your personal use, and that's that's where I would typically recommend you use it. Um, I use it for everything that I'm working on, my personal stuff, stuff that um, we're working on for the business that needs to be developed before it gets published to the wider team. Now, when we're talking about the team access, that's where we would look at the component called SharePoint. Now, you may or may not have heard of it, but SharePoint um, has a bit of a history of being a bit of a beast of an app. Um, it's sort of there, lots of people don't know what to do with it, how do we use it, how do we leverage it? 
the first thing is to start using it as a file storage. Uh, what the key difference with the SharePoint environment is, is that we're not syncing data anymore. So we're going to upload a file into the SharePoint site and that file is going to remain in the cloud all the time. People are going to access that via a browser. They can open it in their full version of Word or Excel or PowerPoint or whatever they're working on. Um, and it will open that file into there, but still have it saved in the SharePoint site. What this means is we're not reliant on uh, multiple copies of this being um, put around the network and on people's devices. So if I make a change on that SharePoint file, I know that that's the only change being made on it. Um, if someone else tries to open that file, I can actually see them trying to open that file and it will notify me and ask me if I want to allow them to open it and work on it collaboratively. Um, and that's where you start getting some really powerful sort of collaboration aspects around SharePoint. Now, SharePoint out of the box is pretty basic, pretty bland. There's really nothing in it. So you need to spend a bit of time in structuring how you want to access it, what you want to do. There is no point in just dumping your entire file structure, dumping your entire NAS or your entire server onto SharePoint because it will not work. Um, it will become a mess. You won't be able to find anything. You'll run into problems with folder structures and folder list views and limits. You need to be very clear and spend a bit of time up front structuring that, um, that file environment that you want people to access. So you get it done right up front um, because working online is going to offer a lot more value to your business and trying to continue managing a file server internally and getting people mobile and access to it. Um, where we really start to see the value in SharePoint is when you start using it to do other functions within the business. It has got some really, really powerful workflow, uh, list management, shared calendars, announcements, anything you can think of, it's in there. And that's the key. You've got to start using it first. And the best point is to start using it as sort of your file repository. Start working on an individual project. Uh, start working on a, a department in your business and get them up there and start, start using it. And you'll start to see what can, can be done with it. Um, it as I say, you, you've got to spend a bit of time and invest a bit of, bit, of, bit of money up front in getting a structure right, getting it set up. Um, but once you've got that base in place, then you can really start to expand on and start to do some really cool things in the business. Um, the other benefit with SharePoint and even Office and, and the OneDrive in this instance, it's probably already in your Office 365 subscription. So you're not going to have to pay any more subscription fees for it. If your users are using email and Office 365, they've got access to SharePoint. They've already got access to OneDrive. They've got access to a number of other tools in there as well. Um, that is the real value that that platform gives. So rolling all the way back to the beginning, the, the key answer for Tony and his team um, would be you, you've invested in Office 365 and your email's already running there. You already have SharePoint and OneDrive sitting there available to you. I would ditch the NAS. I would look to move, get your SharePoint structured, move all your data up there and start accessing it that way. Um, Anything that you and your team want to use, have it saved on SharePoint. Anything that you want to use personally, have it saved in OneDrive, sync to your, your desktop computer. Now, you will hear that you can sync document libraries and, and structures within SharePoint. My recommendation is not. Um, don't do it. The, the sync process is what kills most people when they're moving to these sort of cloud platforms, whether it's Dropbox, whether it's Box, whether it's OneDrive, the moment you have sort of three or four people um, trying to sync data between their machines, share folders out, control who's got access to want, you will end up in a world of hurt. Um, get that data streamlined online, and in this instance, onto SharePoint, um, and really start to, to leverage that cloud platform that you've probably already got there. So that is um, moving from a NAS to a SharePoint. As I said, there are some other ways that you could achieve this. And even in Tony's case at, at Cornerstone, you could still achieve it by setting up a, a rudimentary VPN style service, which would mean you'd need to look at what your internet connection is using, what the router, what the modem is. Does it support an inbound VPN? It adds a, it adds a layer of complexity. Um, it puts a single point of failure on that internet link um, in your office there. And if it's not redundant or available or business grade, then there's no guarantees it's going to be online. 
and most cases it's probably going to be ADSL anyway. So the actual upload speed, um, which is what people will be using when they VPN in, is copying up from that NAS up to the internet to theirs, is going to be slow. So as soon as they start opening up biggish files, and that opening time is going to increase. Whereas when we're on the cloud and we're looking at something like SharePoint, we're using the download speed um, for your connection. And that's only limited by your own download speed, um, whatever internet connection you're on. So if it's 4G or ADSL, you're going to have reasonably quick and good connections to that download. So that's not really going to cause any problems. As your business scales and you've got more users in your office, you're going to need to monitor and, and, and look at that, that internet link and what it's doing. Um, because that's going to become the bottleneck. But in saying that, sort of um, with sort of 10, 15, even 20, you could probably get away with an ADSL. Um, once you start running more services on there, you're going to need something a little bit more, a um, little bit more robust, fast, um, and probably a higher upload to get those documents up onto the system. So that's that's the answer to that. So hopefully that's covered quite a quite, covered you covered your question there. Um, and we have gone over quite a bit of material. So to wrap it up, and I'll just quickly look at the question, but essentially um, moving from a NAS where you've got people in the same office works well, but as soon as you start having those people wanting to access that data remotely, you're gonna need to either set up some sort of VPN. Um, I know in this case, they were trying to use a team viewer machine and connect onto that and then access the NAS and it just becomes clunky. Um, so what we want to do is ideally get that data into the cloud, leverage the tools that you've already got, um, and in this case Office 365, and really start to, to use that technology the way it's supposed to be used. Um, so that's, that's how I'd do it, um, and that's certainly my recommendation in, in this instance. So hopefully you got a bit out of that today. Um, would love to hear your questions, get them onto Facebook, uh, get them onto LinkedIn, even on Twitter, hashtag AskTomTech and we'll get onto it and I'll answer your questions next week. Thanks.